So I was driving past this construction site yesterday and I figured I had to sneak in here just for the vlog. They have a bunch of these cat machines, you know, the ones that move dirt and do other stuff because they're leveling out this mountain. This was a mountain like a week ago. Now it's just flat dirt. How amazing are these machines? I'm such a fanboy. I even had to wear my cat shirt for this video. Most of you guys probably don't care at all about this sort of construction equipment. I think it's pretty cool. But anyway, we're here to talk about poker. More specifically, a session I played this past Wednesday on Hustler Casino Live. Now, I wasn't planning on making a vlog from it. I was just gonna go, do my thing, come home, play some video games, Halo Infinite, if you're interested. But somehow, I ended up playing a bunch of interesting hands and I thought I had to share it on this journal that is, you know, the YouTube channel. So that's what we're here to talk about today. A lot of interesting pots, a lot of questionable plays on my behalf. What else is new when I'm playing on stream? And that's that. So without rambling too much, hopefully I don't get kicked out of here anytime soon. Let's go talk about some poker hands and I'll check in with you guys right after. guys here we are once again today the game is 2550 but it quickly became 2550 100 and in the first interesting hand i am just getting to the table and look down at pocket eight my first hand dealt in raised it up to 300 bucks as the straddle was already on alex makes the call on the button recycler calls the small blind and then suited superman raises it up from the big blind figures that maybe i don't have the best hand and with some callers behind he can capitalize on some dead money i actually have a real hand though so i make the call alex folds on the button but the recycler comes along so three of us go to a flop of 10 4 3 with two diamonds not the worst flop for pocket eights recycler checks suited superman continues for twenty five hundred dollars already not the most comfortable spot he raised pre-flop and now he's betting into two opponents on the flop but I still have a good hand and he could be bluffing with some overcards or maybe a flush draw of some sort. So I make the call, Recycler gets out of the way and we go heads up to the five of clubs on the turn. Shouldn't change too much I think. Suited Superman now checks and we can either check behind or put in a small bet. This time I decide to check it back but we get a bad river card. It's the king of spades. Now suited Superman leads out for $7,000, right around two thirds the size of the pot. And on this river card, I think we're just gonna have to let it go. If he's bluffing with ace jack or ace queen, a hand like that, so be it. But most of the time he's gonna have a hand that beats us, I think so. We make the fold and luckily this time it's correct as he rivered a king. And the next one, L opens up the action to $200. And I'm in middle position with Jack-10 suited. Now, I'm not a huge fan of just calling with this hand. Someone could re-raise behind and then we don't get to play it. So I think it's a good candidate to re-raise. Also helps to balance the times that I've got aces, kings, and you know other good hands. So I make it $600. Action's on suited Superman once again now. He's in the straddle and he cold calls. A little bit suspicious. L comes along as well. So the three of us go to a flop, which isn't the worst we have position. And we flop middle pair with some backdoor draws. It's queen, 10, six, one spade. Action checks to me and once more, we have a close decision. I think betting makes some sense. This is a good board for us. A lot of good things can happen on future streets, but checking back middle pair against two people also seems to make sense. This time I bet small 600 and now suited Superman puts in a check raise, but it's really small, only $2,000. Even if we're up against a better hand, we have a good price to continue with all the aforementioned draws and we might still have the best hand once in a while versus any sort of draw like say king jack or jack nine suited seven eight with a backdoor flush you know all these sorts of available bluffs that suited superman might have in this instance so once l folds i make the call and we turn one of those good cards is a three of spades which gives us a flush draw to go along with our middle pair however suited superman seems undeterred as he now bets the size of the pot just a little over actually sixty eight hundred dollars getting an okay price to call here we don't have direct odds versus this bet but assuming we can win more chips on the river if we make a flush it's a good situation i think so i make the call 
Also keeping in mind that we might still have the best hand if he is going crazy with a straight draw or maybe a hand like 6x of hearts or 6x of clubs. You know, these sort of bottom pair backdoor draws that some players have sometimes. Not always, but worth considering. River's the five of diamonds, so no help for me. No help for him either, assuming he does have a bluff. But if we were behind the whole time... We're still behind now. Suited Superman thinks for a bit and now decides to jam it all in there for a pot-sized bet. Action's on me now and it's 22,000 to call into a pot that's 42,000. We're getting two to one here. Only have to be right a third of the time to make this call okay. The question is, are we right that often? And I think it's pretty damn close, actually. I've played with Suited quite a bit. Last year, I used to host these private games at Hustler. He played in many of them and he is no stranger to punting. So I know he's got that in him, but at the same time, this is a tough line to be bluffing with, and we might be up against pocket sixes or queen ten a good chunk of the time. Having a ten is important, though. We block two pair, also block pocket tens, which he might cold call pre-flop. So really, the only hand I'm concerned with is, I guess, pocket sixes. But aside from that, it's pretty tough for him to have a strong hand. Maybe ace-queen once in a while that doesn't raise pre-flop. I'm not super sure. But yeah, not a lot of bluffs. Close spot. I decide to put the chips in as I often do when it's close. Unfortunately, this time I was wrong and we start off this night losing a pretty big pot against suited Superman. Silver lining is it couldn't have gone to a nicer guy. In this next one, the recycler raises it up to 300. Henry calls on the button and I look down at 5-3 offsuit from the small blind. Now you're probably wondering what the hell is this hand doing in the vlog? Well, short answer is Recycler is someone that I invited to the game. He's a good friend of mine, and I love giving him action with terrible hands out of position. So that's what I decide to do this time. I make it 2100. He makes the call, and Henry comes along as well. Off to a flop, which comes down 10-4 deuce. About as good as it gets for 5-3 off, so we have an open ender. However, as ridiculous as this may sound, I think checking makes the most sense. This is a 10 high board. It's pretty connected, and we're up against two people, so this is one of those hands that I think could function through a check raise or just check call, depending on what happens. I would also be checking over pairs, so I think it's fine. Probably should bet, though, since I have five high. Anyway, I check. Recycler now puts in a bet of $3,200. Henry gets out of the way, and I, of course, am going nowhere. However, the Recycler bet pretty big compared to what I'm used to from him, so I think he's definitely got something. Not necessarily trying to check raise at this point. So I make the call, and we see the nine of hearts on the turn. I've got a heart. I consider leading out on this card, but decide that I'm just going to check raise if he bets or bluff on the river if not too much changes. That is my plan, but it turns out he's not betting at all. So we're off to a river, which, what do you know, actually brings in the straight. It's the ace of clubs. I was not expecting that. I was definitely thinking that I'm going to have to try to buy this pot through a bluff, but it turns out we have a straight now and a very disguised one at that. He's got less than pot behind. No decision for me aside from all in. That's what I do. We don't get the snap call with a flush that was trapping on the turn, so that seems like good news. And after a minute or so, it's obvious we've got the best hand. It's just a question of whether or not we're going to get the max. And we are. He makes a call after a bit, deciding to keep me honest. I don't blame him. I've played a lot of terrible hands against him, so there are definitely some trust issues at play here. Unfortunately for him this time, it works out for me, and we win a $32,000 pot, clawing back in the right direction. Now, for all you guys who hate watching me play terrible hands, I've got the perfect remedy. In this one, there's a race to 200, then a re-race to 800, and then Suited Superman makes it 2,000, so all sorts of raising, before I look down at Pocket Kings in the big blind. Interesting spot when you have a raise, a re-raise, and then a re-re-raise before you look down at a premium hand. It's always like, what do I do, right? Do I put in another raise that's going to look super strong? Do I just cold call that's also going to look super strong? It's kind of hard to play it. But in this instance, I'm looking at Alex's stack. He was the player who made it 800 and he's got $6,500 remaining. I think if I cold call here, there's a good chance that he jams all in in hopes of me not having the strongest hand and suited Superman being out of line behind him. Not always going to happen, but the times it does could pay dividends as perhaps suited Superman might try to isolate his all-in. These are my thoughts as I cold call the 2000. Dylan now calls as well, and then music to my ears, Alex does announce all-in for $7,300. Back to Superman now, the pot is like 13 k 
I think he should call or raise, honestly, with ace three suited. It's an interesting spot for him. There's a lot of dead money, and he can't be in the worst shape ever, but he thinks more wisely than I do and just lets it go. Good instinct on his behalf as I was trapping in the big blind. I call right away with kings. Dylan gets out of the way, so we are heads up all in preflop versus king jack of spades. He asked to run it twice. I usually don't care either way. And we hold on both boards, which is nice because I don't know how many of you guys have been keeping track, but in recent months, I've been chopping or losing a lot when going all in with aces, kings, and queens. Hasn't been very fun, but this one goes our way, and we are back to around even, maybe up a little bit on the session. In the next one, I raise it up to $300 with 7-deuce offsuit, standard play. Lena calls $300, and then Dylan puts in the re-raise in late position to $1,600. Now, Dylan is in that same category as Recycler. We're good buddies, we gamble often together, and I like to give action. I don't know what it is about these guys, but punting money to them is just fun, and the times that I win with bad holdings is even more fun so i make the call out of position with seven deuce off suit do not try this at home not recommended whatsoever i'm just telling the story off to a flop heads up after lena folds on which i flop top pair at seven four three two spades could be a good news bad news situation yeah we've got top pair but if he re-raised pre-flop with an over pair we're in some really big trouble i check it over to him he bets fifteen hundred dollars we're ahead of ace king and other ace highs. We're behind over pairs. I don't really understand what a check raise would accomplish, so I make the call, and I'm a bit embarrassed to go on with this hand, but the turn is the seven of clubs giving me trips, undeserving trips, or maybe very deserved trips. It depends how you look at it. I feel like if you play seven deuce, you should be rewarded, but at the same time, how can this be fair to Dylan, right? Too bad, poker's not fair. I check it, Dylan now bets 3,000, and I jam all in for his remaining 13K. There's plenty of draws available on this board. He might assign me a few of those and say the hell with it. If he's got it, he's got it, and make the call. The problem with jamming all in is that he might fold ace high or whatever random bluffs he could have in this situation. But after he doesn't snap fold, it seems he does not have a random bluff. In fact, he's got a real hand. That's good news to me. And sure enough, Dylan makes the call. So we are playing a nearly $40,000 pot. He flips over red pocket nines just to show me how lucky I got. <sighs> That's how it goes sometimes. Sorry, Dylan. The river is not a nine and we win this one as well. So the last few hands, not my proudest moments. I guess the Kings wasn't too bad, but yeah, now we're up on the night. Things are going swimmingly. Moving right along to this next one where I've got King 5 suited. In this one, there's a raise to 200 from Alex. Suited Superman and Henry make the call, and I complete from the big blind. Off to a flop, which comes 10-5-3, rainbow, one club. So we've got middle pair, backdoor, flush draw. Action checks to Alex, the preflop raiser. He checks it, and now Suited Superman puts in a bet of 400. Henry calls on my right, and we've got an interesting situation developing here. If we had a set or two pair, we would definitely be check raising. And since I'm the one who defended from the big blind, I think it's very credible I could have hands like 10-5 suited, 5-3 suited, pocket fives, pocket threes. I guess the only strong hand I could not have on this board is pocket tens, and even that might just flat preflop once in a blue moon. So I think we've got a great bluff candidate, removal to all those strong hands, and also the backdoor flush draw. I'm trying to think of these bluffs because I don't want to just check raise strong hands and then never check raise bad hands. You just become very predictable, if that makes sense, especially against these guys who I play with on a semi-regular basis. Maybe that's too long-winded of an explanation. You guys could let me know in the comments if I should just shut up and move on with the hand histories. But anyway, for all those reasons, I go for it. I make it $2,400 to go. Alex folds. Suited Superman folds his Queen Jack offsuit. Got his hand caught in the cookie jar a little bit. And now it's on Henry with top pair. He's seen enough of my work to not go anywhere just yet. He calls the 2,000. I think it's obvious at this point we are up against the 10, but I'm planning on just continuing to apply aggression. It's going to be really hard to hang on with just top pair in this situation but as it turns out we don't need to sweat it too much the turn is the king of hearts giving me a super disguised two pair henry checks again and now of course i am going to continue betting only this time it's for value i put in a bet of seven thousand dollars a little over the size of the pot trying to set up an all-in on the river and what do you know henry makes the call so we've got a great situation shaping up here off to a river which is the three of hearts it does bring in the backdoor flush, but all draws missed, such as 6-4 suited or 4 do suited. I might also occasionally be turning a 5 into a bluff, which I'm sure Henry knows. 
yeah, it's tough for me to have value in this spot. So when Henry checks, I think we've got a pretty clear value bet looking back on this. But in the moment, I ended up overthinking this situation. I thought maybe he could have king 10. I thought maybe he could have a three himself. He might even have a hand like 10x of hearts that ends up rivering a flush. And not just that, I didn't really think we would get called by worse for an all-in sizing. I put him most likely on a 10 this entire hand. And I don't know if a 10 is going to call off the entire stack here. I didn't want to put myself in a reverse free roll situation where we're only getting called by better hands. So I make a pretty nitty check back in my opinion here. And sure enough, he's got Jack-10 with a heart, which is one of those hands that might have called an all-in, especially Henry, who does not like to be bullied. So yeah, I was pretty frustrated with this hand. I felt like we really missed a great opportunity to collect an additional $25,000, but instead I check it back like a total wuss. So yeah, I was happy to win this pot, but very disappointed with uh, what I think is a clear mistake here, checking back this river. On to the next one. I've got Ace-6 suited this time. Dylan raises to 400, L calls in late position, and I'm in the small blind. Not really a spot where I want to call too many hands, mostly just fold and occasionally re-raise good holdings. Ace six suited is a good holding, so I make it 2800 to go. Lena gets out of the way, and now it's back to Dylan. He decides 2800 is not quite enough and bumps it up to $6,700. A little over a min raise, good sizing from him, I think, especially in position. L gets out of the way, and now it's back on me. Now, as you guys can see from Dylan's stack, he's put in a pretty good chunk of it. He's only got 16000 remaining, so I think all options actually make some sense here. Folding with ace-6 out of position can't be that bad. Just calling... Well, it's probably the worst option. We don't have a lot of playability, and stack to pot ratio is not great. Jamming all in might get the job done if he's out of line with like ace 10 or ace jack or something like that. But in the end, I end up just calling, partly due to that seven deuce hand from earlier, perhaps feeling a little bit of guilt. So I decided to get in there with the a6 suited, go to a flop and see what happens. I also do like playing post flop, so there's that. Anyway, board comes down six, three deuce, all spades. A bit similar to that seven deuce hand, actually. We've got top pair, top kicker, but given all the pre-flop action, that might actually be bad news for me. Not really sure at this point in the hand, but I start with a check. He now bets 3,000 and I make the call. Turn card, well, it's another six. This is a lot like the seven deuce hand. We turn trips, maybe we needed it, maybe we didn't. It turns out this time I did not as Dylan's just got ace queen offsuit, not even a spade. I check it, he checks it back and we see the king of clubs on the river. Now I'm expecting him to check back a lot of hands like over pairs without a spade or ace queen high for example. And who knows, he might even check back a hand like king queen once in a while, afraid of a flush or ace king, maybe a six. I don't want that to happen, of course, so I decide to jam all in there. Worth noting, I could also have some bluffs, so I think this play makes sense. Dylan is not loving it. Once again, he's in a miserable situation. I think this one he could probably let go, not having a spade or a pair in his hand, but he's had enough of this. It's a frustrating night for him, and it's not always easy against a player who might be full of it, which I have been in the past. So I don't really blame him for eventually calling you guys know how it is. After a frustrating day, sometimes you just want to win a pot. This time, it's not going to be it, Dylan. I'm sorry. I turned trips once again, and we win a $45,000 pot this time. Once again, getting lucky. Ace-6 versus Ace-Queen. I'm sure you guys have heard the saying, it's better to be lucky than good. I don't fully agree with that, but in this exact hand, maybe I do. <laughs> but anyway, with that, we move to the next one where I've got a real one. Guys, it's a real hand. It's as real as it gets. In fact, pocket aces. Henry raises to 300. I make it $1,000 to go. Raymond cold calls from the small blind. That looks like good news to me. Even better news, though, is that Alex from the straddle puts in another raise. $4,300 to go. That's pretty sweet, considering I have the best starting hand in No Limit Texas Hold'em. Back around to me now, and I think calling is fine since Alex isn't super deep, but I decide to just play it straightforward. I put in another raise to 11,000. Raymond gets out of the way. Alex jams all in. I call, of course, and we are off to the races. Pocket aces versus pocket queens. 
And you guys remember earlier how I said I haven't been running super good with these all-in preflops, having aces, kings, and queens and stuff? Yeah, this one is kind of like that because he hits a queen on the first board. Luckily, he wanted to run it twice and he does not get there on the second one. So we chop it up at least, which is better than losing for sure. But it would be nice to start scooping these, I'm not going to lie. That aside, we move to the last interesting hand of the night in which I've got ace four suited. The $400 straddle is on. I open up the action to 1,000, and then Henry puts in a raise from the straddle. He's got ace queen. I guess it makes some sense. Could also call sometimes since I open from early position. But anyway, he makes it $5,400 to go. We're not super deep here, so I think folding wouldn't be the worst thing ever. But we've got a playable hand, and we get to go last on every street post flop. So I make the call, and we go off to a flop of king, nine, eight with one spade. Henry bets $3,000, and already it's kind of close. We've got the backdoor spades. We have some removal to ace-king, I guess. But aside from that and the overcard, not much going on for me. However, I decide to call, see what happens on the turn, which is a three of diamonds. Pretty much done with this hand if he bets, but he checks it. I just check it back, and we see the five of diamonds on the river. Four diamonds out there, and I could have some flushes, say hands like pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket sevens, all these sorts of holdings with a diamond would certainly arrive on this river. Henry checks again, and well, we've got about the worst hand we could have, but more importantly, like I said, could be going for some value with middling flushes. Not gonna have the nut flush super often, but I think that's okay. Anyway, I put in a bet of around half pot, $9,000. And immediately once I bet this, and I'm not saying this just because he's got the nuts, but it just didn't feel right. And I think the reason why is because we have removal to hands that we want him to fold. Having the ace of spades is pretty terrible in this instance, since we'd be wanting to get folds from hands like ace queen with a spade or ace king with a spade, maybe even aces with a spade. So yeah, not really loving the exact hand that I chose to take this line with, but that's how it went. Another mistake, I think, we got check raised, of course, and I just let it go. I'm not super mad about losing the pot, but I'm mostly just mad about making what I think is another mistake. That's two on the day that I could have avoided. That might sound ridiculous considering I played 5-3 offsuit and 7-deuce offsuit, but these are all things that I'm aware that I'm doing. You know, these are like voluntary mistakes, if that makes sense. Whereas the check back with king-5 suited or this bluff on the river... I think are mistakes that I should avoid. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the hands and stay tuned for some announcements. Yeah, so as you guys saw, a good result overall. I was in for, I don't know how much, but cashed out for around $30,000 more than that, which is an excellent result. Not the biggest win ever when you consider the stakes, but that's still no small chunk of change. I'm more than happy with it. Anyway, uh, this upcoming weekend, I'm going to Las Vegas. Gonna be playing in a private game at Aria, also a private game at Resorts World, most likely. And who knows what else? So if you guys like the Vegas vlogs, you like that sort of footage, you like when I travel, stay tuned for those upcoming videos. And if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, you should probably subscribe. I don't know why I just asked you guys to do that. I never really talk about subscribing to the channel. Do what you want. I would like it if you did it, but if you don't, it's all good. Life goes on. That's all I got for you guys today. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. And until next time, good luck at your local tables. If you see me in Vegas, say hello. If not, maybe some other time. Bye.